Hey, so this is Amy, and I'm just going to walk you through some of the Google Forms that I've made and then show you how you can use it as a quiz, and so just how those quiz features work. So some different ones that I've made are a parent communication form where I kept track of just like who came to a conference and uh, um, then like what concerns and questions were brought up, positive feedback, things that I need to do. So I find that that's helpful for me, especially for fall conferences, to just have a little track record of what happened. And to me, it's easier to have that up. I also usually have my computer up for part of the time anyway to show them things like Google Classroom and how they can get to it. Here are a couple of quizzes I made. So I make adapted quizzes that just have more pictures and are a little bit easier for some of my lower level ESOL learners. This is the regular one. This form is something for them to choose different book titles. So we did a separate sort of speed dating activity with the books and then they marked that on a piece of paper and then they had that piece of paper with them so that they could just quickly fill this out. This helps me a lot. Because, so this is what it looks like for them when it's just a drop down question, which is one of the choices. This is another question option you can do, which uh, is like good for availability. So I've done this for different volunteer opportunities. This was something that Rebecca and I did for trying to schedule our health presenters. So just trying to see who was available when. And then nice things about this is it graphs it out for you. This is another quiz that I did. I'll come back to this in a minute. This is a form that I had for interim comments. So I just type in the student's name and then I select the different pieces that work for them. I have these each as a different section. So I just scroll to the next page. And so these are all just comments that I've used in the past. So I can add on a little comment about if there's certain missing work that's available and I can change these depending on what's coming up with the different quarters. And then I also have something at the end for if it's at the very end of the year. This is an example of a figurative language quiz I did. So for these, I just like duplicated the question and then I changed some of the answer choices. So these ones you can see it's simile, metaphor, hyperbole, personification, and then it is different as I keep going because I just kept changing them out a little bit. And you can move the question choices around. So you see these little four arrows so I can move these different pieces around. When I click answer key, I can change the point value for any question. I can add answer feedback so I could, for instance, explain that there's no like or as, but this is still making a comparison, so therefore it's a metaphor. And then I click done to go back to the same thing. You can also move questions around by dragging things. This is an example math one I made. So once again, I really like how I can add in visuals. You just click that little image button and then you can search for something in Google image. This is a pretty um, limited search. So I often will upload something that I snagged from another source just for the quiz. You can have multiple answers that they choose. So you can have them actually need to change that to check boxes. So the difference between check boxes and multiple choice is that with check boxes you can select more than one. With multiple choice you can only select one answer. And you can have certain short answer texts and then in this case, I made it so that they can only do 3 tenths or 30 hundredths. Those are the only fractions that equal 30%. So there's no way for them to 
change that, so I just automatically have that set as the correct answer, and then any other answers, it's going to mark them as incorrect. Here you can also add in YouTube videos, so I have them watch different book trailers that I found. And so I just previewed these book trailers, and they like doing this by themselves. We can do it as a whole class, but if they're really not interested in something, um, then they can kind of like skip ahead to the next one. And so it cuts down on some time. And they like kind of doing it by themselves or with a partner. This is similar fantasy titles, and I gave them the links to different videos if they wanted to watch. I'd done book talks on all of these, so I was hoping that they would recognize the covers to be able to pick. Look at the weather quiz. So when I look at the responses, then I can see sort of how they do as a whole class. I can look at questions that are frequently missed. So as I scroll down, it shows me who got it. So they very few kids, you know, some kids are always going to get things wrong, but very few kids got this question wrong and just randomly chose, whereas most kids knew that this was troposphere. Ones that I might want to go back to are the ones like this question, where clearly they didn't know the answer to this one. So this is a question I would want to cover as a class after the quiz. But mostly, this is another one that I would want to go back to because so many people mixed up stratus and nimbostratus. When you grade it by question, that's definitely the easiest. I would not grade individual unless you were specifically trying to figure out an individual kid's form that you could print out after they'd taken the test if you needed to do that for some reason. So when you grade by question, the ones that are short, the ones that are multiple choice, you don't have to mess with at all because that's super easy. The ones that end any like drop down questions, that kind of stuff, if you have multiple answers that are correct, like you're trying to get them to select both, um, like two different choices, and like the example math one that I gave where I wanted them to pick two equal ratios or something, or two equal fractions, then I need to go ahead and manually check those sorts of things. So if I wanted, um, if there's a chance for them to get partial credit, then I would have to go ahead and do that. So same thing with like a long answer choice, I often will do that. The last question, this is a long answer. And so when I graded this one, I made it worth multiple points. And so I was grading them on the fact that they had given, uh, it was a point for naming the season in the Northern Hemisphere, a point for naming the season in the Southern Hemisphere, and then a point for explaining their, um, their answer. So I could give them partial credit, but I had to go in and manually do that. And you do that just by grading by question. So for these ones, when I'm looking at like what type of weather, I can come up with all these different sort of responses. So five kids wrote stormy weather, so it automatically graded that one as correct because I had already written stormy weather as a correct answer, but maybe for some of the other ones that I didn't know, like storms bad weather with a period, I did not come up with that. I had put bad and bad weather and storms, but I hadn't put all those together. So originally it had marked this as zero, but I had to go ahead and just mark it correct, that that was still correct. So even doing this like by question is pretty easy. This is the only thing that actually takes time. And then afterwards you can release all the scores. I have all of my quiz responses in a spreadsheet, so I in making the quiz, so uh, you can change different settings 
So for the quiz, you like just click to make this a quiz and it assigns point values and then allows auto grading. The locked mode only works on Chromebooks, which we don't have, so that doesn't work. You can choose to immediately give the answer. You could do that for something like an exit ticket or even an entry ticket, and then kids already know the answer as they're as they're moving into it. So they often really like getting the release grade, but for quizzes, I mark it later. And then when they can, you can select what they will be able to see when they get their email back. Um, and so in their email, if they just type in score released into their email, then it will pop up with whatever quiz responses they have. So they'll be able to see their grades and the whole form that way. I also put it into Google Classroom so they can see their own grades in Google Classroom. So those are the settings. If you wanted to decorate it, you can decorate things with different images, um, and you can change the font style to a few different ones. I usually just leave it on basic, and then you can do different colors. So those are just options for you to do that. When you send it, I send it usually with a link, and then I, um, or I could just post it as a material. I wouldn't even have to have them turn it in. And then you click add a link and you post it. And then you can select which students use it. So there's so many different uses you could do to get feedback, um, all different sorts of quizzes. I like that I can add in videos and you can add in pictures into the into the document so that it's all in color, which I think is especially nice for science to have like color images of different things. Uh, you can do it to have them select different materials, stations, book club choices, all that sort of stuff. And then you can use it as a teacher as just a tool to collect information or just to consolidate different choices together like I showed you with the interim comments. So definitely let me know if you have any questions. I'm totally happy to um, talk through any of this with you and help you out.